Welcome to Pod Crushed. I'm asking my co-hosts Nava Kavlin and Sophia and Sorry. Uh, in case you time, forgot who how, we are. Yeah, well, I have to remind myself every now and then. <laughs> Sometimes I forget which one is which, but yeah. thankfully you're in the same screen and that takes care of it. Uh, I'm in such a good mood. This is honestly mm-hmm. the most excited I've ever been for a guest on the show. I'm just a, like a super fan. And yeah, I'm just like in such a good mood. So as you might be able to tell, this is another host episode. <laughs> it's just going to be the three of us. Uh, yeah. Were you excited or nervous? I was nervous yesterday, but today I was just excited all day. I was just really excited. For I it. texted Nava last night and I was like, because I, I was watching all of Jake Johnson. John- <laughs> we're keeping that there we go there we go now we, 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 we kept it a surprise now you've you've chopped it up i was watching all of jake, jake johnson's John. stuff well actually i should say first when we first got jake johnson i kept thinking it was jack johnson and i was like interesting are we a we're, musician we're, we're uh, oh that's we're right we're doing more yeah, musicians right. this yeah. season <laughs> I didn't know but anyway no i was watching all this stuff and I texted Nav. I said, he's like my new favorite celebrity. I'm obsessed with him. He's mm. so funny. Yeah. So she said, are you excited or nervous because of that? And I said, I'm really excited, but I'm also nervous that we're not funny enough for him. Like he's so funny that I'm just nervous about trying to keep up with him. And I think the, the trick is you just don't. You yeah, just, exactly. you just, you just let him, you just <laughs> you let, just him, let go. him go. Yeah. He's so good. It's funny you felt that way about this. I mean, we've had a lot of comedians on the show. I know, but I don't know what it was about. about you didn't Jake like any Johnson. of them. Yeah, yeah, she's not a huge fan. Conan sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Roy Wood Jr. Psh. Yeah. Mm. Penn, how are you feeling today? Uh, a little crestfallen. Yeah. Why? Little, that you're not little, our favorite little, celebrity. Little... Yeah. That your humor doesn't yeah. intimidate us. Yeah. <laughs> you don't find us funny. I take it personally. Yeah. No, today uh, we don't often do banter in this sort of glowy afterglow mm-hmm. of uh, of our glowy guest, but. It was a particularly fun one. And I will say also that doing research was especially enjoyable. He, he's, he's very funny. And the projects he's a part of are um, joyful and, and yeah. light. And uh, so I guess that's that, that you now know who we have on the show. It's Jake Johnson. If you don't know him from New Girl or Drinking Buddies or any of the other iconic comedies he's a part of. Now he is uh, written, directed and starred and produced in self reliance it's on hulu now and he also has a podcast he's like a he's a he's a fellow podcaster mm. and we sort of rib each other about that in the beginning you know like fellow <laughs> podcasters do <laughs> Inner circle uh, it's stuff. Called, yeah yeah <laughs> it's called uh it's called we're here to help we're right? here to help we're here to help and uh jake johnson was here to help us help you help each other uh. Goodbye. <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> Welcome to Pod Crushed. We're your hosts. I'm Penn. I'm Nava. And I'm Sophie. And I think we would have been your middle school besties. Cramming for finals 15 minutes before they start. Shit. So, you know, not to do too cheesy of Italian, but, you know, I did notice that in your, your film out now, self-reliance which you wrote and directed uh you and starred in i should say obviously y- y- it struck me that the first time your two protagonists open up to each other is when they're one is 10 the other is 12 you know they're telling stories from this time right yes so you know let's just start you kind of already got us in there a bit but but at 12 years old mm. who were you where were you how were you seeing the world so 12, my kids are in fourth grade at 10, so 12 is probably seventh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, six, or seventh. Yeah. six or seventh. Six or seventh. Uh, six and seventh were a tough, tough age. So, so I'm seeing this with my kids, So mm-hmm. it, and then you go to that age, so uh, we have like their math tutors and all that, and I'm trying to help with the homework, but you realize when you get to algebra, and I'm going in the weeds here a little bit, but you're then applying all the stuff you had learned and you need to have a nice base of everything to make junior high work. And uh, that's when the rubber really met the road for old Jakey J. Mm. And that's when I really realized I'm behind. Mm-hmm. And mm. I don't see a catch up occurring. <laughs> so that was really when I started getting in big trouble in school. Mm. When I started saying, like, I can't be revealed for this. 
So trouble started. I remember it was the beginning of like not getting on sports teams for attitude stuff. A teacher told my mom at a, t a parent teacher conference that uh, I was very likable and maybe I could be on like a construction crew as a job. <laughs> and wow. my brother, who was like a little boy genius, they were like, he should be the president. <laughs> he should design the buildings his brother puts together. It was the beginning of that. They're like, my brother was so smart and my sister was such a hard worker. And then when I came, then that is, age was the Jake beginning of like, a lot. <laughs> yeah, Jake's also here. <laughs> so that was the beginning of me going like, this doesn't work in the way I thought about it. Because fourth, fifth grade, you could hide. Mm -hmm. mm. And I remembered getting singled out and getting trouble in junior high that I ended up dropping out of high school when I was a sophomore for a year and kind of resetting. Uh, and then going back and redoing that year, I dropped out in October of my sophomore year and then came back the following year. Wow. Uh, but it was junior high was the beginning of me going like, and you know, I think a lot of people see it with addiction later in life or, or a relationship that doesn't work. Yeah. Where you, there's a moment looking back mm -hmm. that you're like, well, I mean, that was a pretty mm. good telling moment. <laughs> <laughs> and and for me, it mm. wasn't in fifth grade. I got in trouble in fifth grade all the time. Who mm. cared? When I got to junior high, certain things started happening that I was realizing like, like I, I'm not keeping up in this race. Mm. That year that you dropped out, what did you do? Um... So my uncle Eddie had uh, had some legal trouble, so he was living with us. So I worked with him. We hung neon signs. I, you know, I was diagnosed with dyslexia when I was in like third or fourth grade, but it was a very different era of dyslexia. Mm -hmm. And so my family just kind of looked away from it and said, the real cure for dyslexia is stop being so lazy. Mm -hmm. So, you know... Mm -hmm. That year was the beginning of being like, let's start reviewing and thing that maybe there's another way. And then in that period, my mom said, you've got to do something. So I started like writing a play. Mm -hmm. cool. And then in writing a play, which was just dialogue, mm -hmm. I was like, well, there's something interesting about this. And so then I could get into reading by really just wanting to read uh, things that were dialogue heavy. Mm -hmm. and, you know, any like plays and then screenplays. And then you could do more prose because you'd go like... I mean, it's just, you know, especially when you get to like a catcher in the rye where you go, well, this is all just one monologue. Yeah. yeah. You're like, oh, this is just I what this guy thinks. This is just, so he's talking as opposed yeah. to being like, I can't wrap my head around any of this. Mm. So it was, that was the year of kind of rebuilding the foundation. Mm. That now, you know, I'm probably the smartest guy on planet Earth. So, yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Really yeah. And, and so if somebody listening is like, he started rebuilding host. and he's still there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. So, so, er, so just the, those years leading up to that, what sounds like the first time, you know, you were reading and writing that would lead to uh, what you're doing now and what you're doing. Yeah. Been like doing. The, the dropout year was, so junior high was the beginning of. These other kids seem to know things that I don't. Mm. You know, blank plus five equals whatever. <laughs> you know, where you go, like, okay, so this is easy to figure out. It was at that era, I remember a teacher talking and honestly thinking, I don't know what this human being is asking. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't even yeah. know what the question is. You're trying to get me to answer it in front of the class? Mm. And so then you would look and other kids would raise their hand and be like, seven. Mm. And I'm like, you, how do you little brainiacs all know this? Mm. So, so the, so, and just to be clear, you, you took a year off. Yes. And then you go back to the same grade. Is that right? I go or back. Then I, so I, then I went back to the grade I dropped out. So I ended up graduating a year younger than the kids I went to class with. Hmm. Took me five years to get through high school. Yeah. Essentially what happened was the, I was, there was a book report that was due the following day. And at that point I was getting mostly D's. And it was early October, and I said to my mom, hey, I can't go to school tomorrow. And she said, why? And I said, uh, I have an in-class essay on this book, and I haven't read it yet. And if I fail this, then I have an F. Mm -hmm. And she goes, huh, so are you going to read the book tonight? I said, no. <laughs> she goes, are you going to read you, the did book? Did you say it like that? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and she goes, are you going to read the book tomorrow? And I go, no. <laughs> and she goes, when are you going to read the book? And I think I have, or at least the story she tells in our memory is, I said, I'm never going to read the fucking book. Wow. And so she said, so when, uh, so when are you going back to school? And the moment hit. Mm. 
Hmm. And I kind of, I don't remember how the story goes. Either I said, I'm not, or she said, you're not. And then I just didn't go back. Wow. And so there was not a big plan from either her point of view or mine. We just knew what was happening wasn't working. Mm. Yeah. And so that year just started slow. I just, the next day I just woke up and yeah. didn't do anything. I think, oh. I feel like what you're describing of fifth, sixth, seventh grade, that feeling of, or when algebra started realizing like the teacher's asking a question and you have no idea what they're even asking and, and all these other kids around you do. I, I, that's very relatable. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh man, but, I should have taken a year off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, cool. by the way, these two are former yes. teachers and administrators as <laughs> part of why the, uh, why that's why that's part of the, well, actually, yeah. Awesome. So, so that happened to that's me. That's not, that's not really, that's not their spirit. Yeah. Yes. You know, but they, they did, they did have that. No, but, that. but I will tell you just a quick story. <laughs> when I yes, did start please. teaching. I taught fifth grade and I remember <laughs> that when we started math, I had, we had like split the class into to different groups based on ability. And I was with like the higher ability kids. And there's one kid, Emmett, he taught that year for me. I, mean, <laughs> I, literally, I did not understand Amazing. the math. And I yeah. would say, Emmett, could you show us how you solve this problem? <laughs> and he would show us. And then I'd be like, hmm, any questions? <laughs> Very good, Emmett. Yeah. <laughs> Emmett, can you I show the it. class how I did my taxes <laughs> by doing my taxes, <laughs> you little brainiac? Yeah. I don't know. He must be. He's going far. And <laughs> yeah, the second year I caught up. But, yeah. <laughs> but fifth, fifth grade is the it's the beginning. Yeah, yeah. it's true. You're, it's it's, like, it's yeah. kind of it's getting real. And then sixth yeah. grade, you go like, all right, let's go. It feels like the more likely outcome of dropping out would have been to do like vocational training. What inspired yeah. you to go back to school? Mm. I was raised by a single mother who expected a lot from us. Um. We had like, you know, she just had like, was always driving. And this is not to take away from having like a skill set. I kind of wish I had one, you know, as apart from just doing what we do. Mm. But in that time off, she said like, you have to do something. And creative mm. was a big option in my house. My mm. mother makes stained glass windows. <laughs> you know, she so always cool. had kind of different, gorgeous. But she always had like different junk shops we were growing up where she would like open up a store, sell what she was making, sell other mm. things. So... It, it just kind of felt like you've got to do something to fill these hours. And playwriting was honestly just the first thing that kind of popped up because mm -hmm. it was dialogue heavy. And you could just crush pages by having a character be like, what's up? Not much. <laughs> and you? I don't know. Yeah. All of a sudden you're at half a page. <laughs> and that counts. You could say to your mom, like, I wrote seven pages a day. Yeah. What's it about? <laughs> Two yeah. Joes and a park bench talk and who cares? <laughs> if the dialogue is uh, entertaining, you got, yeah. you know, a 10 page play. Yeah. <laughs> had you had any exposure to the arts, you know, yes. in terms of performance art? Maybe, maybe it was the written word or sometimes it's music. Sometimes it's, you know, I mean, comedy is obviously a huge part of your life. Was that yes. ever, was that on the horizon already? Or like, yeah, you just know, tell us my, a bit about you that. Know, it, it's hard because the idea of the arts and art for artists and other artists has never really attracted me. Uh, and the idea of what we do as actors and writers in terms of it being an art form that's never felt like uh, that's never felt like it was what it is in my bones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Entertainment feels very different, and that feels like very much in the bones. And that connected to when I was in fourth grade, and a teacher would call me in front of the classroom to read something, and I know I can't read this because I can't pronounce the words correctly, and people are gonna laugh. My first thought was, if I can get them laughing before I start reading. Then I've won. Mm -hmm. And so whatever that thing is, and then getting the group to laugh, and then if you can get the teacher to laugh, and then if you can get the teacher on your team, they're going to see that you're not doing this to be an asshole. You're just doing this to make them laugh. That seemed very natural and very fun. So going back to like, you know, with you guys as like fifth grade teachers, or just you were a fifth grade teacher. Mm -hmm. Um but when I am now around kids and, you know, I tried substitute teaching for a day in Brooklyn, I got fired. But when I see a kid <laughs> who You got fired from substitute yeah, teaching? Uh, literally we'll day, day yeah. one. Day one. <laughs> I was asked by the principal to leave. <laughs> we have to hear about that after. Yeah, yeah. Not a joke. Not a joke. It was humiliating. In front of the kids. Yeah. 
Oh, jeez. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, wait. thanks for coming. Oh, wow. Geez. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you'll now see certain kids who have like a big personality or they're trying to do something. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, you're covering for something. Like, yeah. Something's cooking. That's so true. Um, but so that it wasn't the it wasn't anything that besides you know my brother did second city second city improv stuff in Chicago when we were growing up. Bill Murray lived you know in the town right next to me when I grew up. Belushi mm. was a big character we all studied. Second City mm. uh, was near us, so Tina Fey and Rachel Dratch were on main stage when I was in high school. Chris Farley was a name we all had heard of because you mm. could go to the free improv shows. And watch these unthinkably funny actors for free yeah. while they were coming up. And then SNL would take them and then they would be in movies. But we could see them all for free at a certain right. point. So yeah. there was a path in my head there. Mm. Jake, you have, an, you have a really interesting story about your mom and her intuition. Can you share yes. that story with us? Yes. So the first time I told this was on a different pod and I didn't plan on telling it, uh, but that was a podcast where they were smoking a lot of pot in the room. (laughs) Per per my request, they said they didn't have to, but I was trying to be like a good guest. (laughs) So I was definitely secondhand star. Like no joke. I was trying to be cool, but I was like, fuck, man, like who's got some chips? Because I'm actually hanging now. And the reason I set it up this way is that there were other people involved in this and other mm-hmm. families. And by no means did I ever mean to say no one wrote or there's no been backlash, but it was something mm-hmm. that didn't feel right for me. So there's no comment on another parent. Mm-hmm. So course, it's not to say, course, but it's yeah. just something that for me personally didn't feel right because mm-hmm. it's a very personal family story. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I was in fourth grade, um, and um, it was a night we were at like a spring sing type of thing, watching my brother and my sister do some version of a show. And out of nowhere, my mother turns to me and said, you're not going to school tomorrow. Mm. And, you know, I said, OK. <laughs> and then I realized that the next day we were going on a field trip to uh, like little Vietnam in the city. And I literally already had like a bag of candy and I was going to sit on the bus with my friends. And I'm like, I could all day. Yeah. And so I go, mom, please, uh, please let me go. I'm going on a field trip. And she says, when do you leave? And I said, as soon as we get to school, we leave. And she goes, when do you come back? And I said, three o'clock. We're going to be gone all day. And she thought about it and then said, fine, you can go. So uh, I I got on the bus. We went to Vietnam, uh, little Vietnam. And while we were there, a woman entered our elementary school through the classroom that I would have that I was in, wow. uh, and it was an empty classroom, and I had been getting in a lot of trouble. Mm. And so the teacher had separated me from the rest of the class, and my desk was near the door this person would have entered, and the room was empty. And she walked in and walked through the school. She was not mentally right. Mm. She walked into another class and shot seven students. Mm. Mm. And so, you know, it was a really ugly, brutal thing. And again, the reason I bring it up is that was crazy what my mom did. Yeah. And I don't get it. Yeah. And I have kids and I don't have that. Now, I'm also going to say she's had a lot of instincts that were wrong. Yeah. yeah. Sure. (laughs) So, you know... There was there was another thing that she did that because when that story came out, it went a little viral. And then she commented and she said, you forgot the other really big one. Mm. And I was like, because that was just the story that I remembered from childhood. But there Mm. was another story where there was a kid who um, had gotten involved with stealing credit cards and he had given me some and told me to go to like a GameStop or whatever it was called back then. And. You buy games with your credit card, then you go to another place and you sell them because it's a stolen credit card. Yeah. And then you just take all the cash. Wow. And so a friend and I had had these like three freight credit cards and we were going to go and we took the bus to another (laughs) town and we walked into whatever it was called then, you know, video game store. Mm. And I had a stack of video games and my buddy had a stack of video games and we turned a corner and my mother was there. It was not where we lived. Wow. And she said, you turned a corner and you were white as a ghost. And we went like, I go, I'm like, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. And my mom goes, I don't know. <gasps> and then she goes, what are you guys doing here? And I go like, 
just looking at all these games. <laughs> and he goes, what are you talking about? And like, we didn't have a system. So she was wow. like, what are you doing? And I'm like, mom, nothing, nothing. <laughs> and she goes, what are you? And I was like, what are you doing? Wow. And so she goes, put the fucking games back. What are you talking about? And we left. We went back with home. She drove us home. As she tells that story, she was driving and something in her said, go into that, uh, pull into this mall. Go and she just blindly yeah. listened. Wow. What wow. turned out the kid who was doing it had got busted for selling weed, and the cops wanted him to do this to bust like ten other people. Oh my they were, god! They were looking to do like it was a, a setup. Big, it was a setup. You were in a ring. I Jake, was in a little crazy. ring. They wanted to like bust all these kids in the suburbs to then try <gasps> to get to who was actually behind it all. Wow! And so, like whatever that is in my mom, and I've talked to her about it. She's Incredible. like, I don't know, just something in my gut told me I should do this. What do you think that is? Uh, I don't know. You know, mm. we always believe, you know, the movie I made, Self-Reliance, is all about listening yeah. to your instinct no matter what. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I wanted to make that movie was during the pandemic, you know, when every, when news was getting subjective mm. and everything was saying different stuff and we were all going down totally different trains of thoughts and yeah. everybody seemed to be right. And I that thought, has what? stopped. As oh yes, you, everybody. You know, we now all have one of these. <laughs> yeah. we, we've righted the ship. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yes, we all listen to our supreme leader now. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but I did realize in that era that this was a brutal time to have like young kids starting life. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I thought, like, if I'm going to make something, I want the point of it to be uh, listen to your instinct, no matter what. Mm. If you walk into a room and you don't feel safe, if you're at a party. Don't stay. Hmm. You can go home. Make up some excuse, but there's something in you that's telling you, I'm not safe here tonight. Hmm. I feel like we all get conditioned to not listen to that and don't it's be weird true. and don't be crazy. But I think it's okay to listen to that instinct. And that was something hmm. I was very much raised with. Hmm. And so that was kind of the core of that idea that even though all the facts are looking like, you're fine. Relax. If your gut's telling you something, probably a good idea to listen to it. Yeah, yeah. We, we've talked about that on this show a lot. Like, I, I think we would, or I would call it the like intuition, you know, yeah. something like that. But uh, it's so much, so many times in our lives, and it really does, I think, start in in middle school, like in the way that you have visceral memories of it, but that you are almost being trained by mm -hmm. our culture, or any given culture, to to deny that feeling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, well, because it's embarrassing when it's wrong. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but it's okay. You yeah, can be those wrong. are lower like my, stakes. Yeah, like my sister thinks she has my mom's thing, but she doesn't. <laughs> so, like, she walks up to pregnant ladies all the time, like she did to one of my best buddies, and she'll go like, "Congratulations!" And like, "Thanks!" And she'll go like, "You're having a little girl," and they're like, "Well, actually, uh, they, we they were told it's a boy," and she's like, oh, "No, honey, you're having a girl." <laughs> And then when it's a boy and I'm like, you were wrong. <laughs> She'll be like, well, I was wrong. So what? <laughs> Everything in me told me it was a girl. You got to follow it. That you got to follow it. So like, there's no, I'm not saying like as a betting person, always bet on your instinct. <laughs> yeah. But like, you might as well follow it. The what, stories what, that we don't remember from childhood is the yeah. 5,000 times my mom was wrong and said yeah, like, yeah. One of the things she was wrong about is she let me drop out of school. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, she wasn't wrong. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I'm just joking. I'm tomato, tomato. Because you, <laughs> you know, tomato. you're the most you're... famous out of all your siblings. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Are you? Just uh, is that clear? Not, Unfortunately, no. My brother's Bill Gates. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> He's doing pretty good. He stayed in school. He stayed in school. That's a big age gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get to that later. Yeah. Jake, we have some classic questions that we ask every guest uh, before we move on to your career. Can you tell us about a first love, first heartbreak in your life? Well, I don't, I wouldn't call it the first love, but the first, uh, and I think about it with my kids a lot, but my first like love sucks moment <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. was there was this girl, Alex Kerkovich or something like that, some like unique name last name she moved to town and she was just smoking hot and so <laughs> cool and everybody it was like you know it's like the traditional new kid moves to school yeah, yeah. and everybody's in love with them mm -hmm. mm. um and i thought she and i were building towards something 
Mm. And there was some party at her house that I was invited to. And I remember it because there is a, a movie, The Bodyguard with Whitney Houston. There was some like famous song from it. I'll always like, love I, you. Never, I will always love of you, of course. Yeah, yeah. And that was on at the party. Wow. Mm. And I remember being like, this is honestly like an out of body experience. And I was like going through the place looking mm. for her. And I saw her in a basement room and the door was open. She was making out with this guy, Ben Dickerson or Dickinson. Uh, was that really and his he, name? <laughs> yes. I, I could be getting the last names wrong, but it was something like that. But he and I were very different. We weren't mm. friends. We weren't the same type. You know, like you're yeah, like, there was yeah. a type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. I was like, oh, if she likes him, I have no fighting chance. Mm. We are not like, if you like that, mm. you know. Yeah. If I have a restaurant where I'm selling, you know, deli food and you just said your favorite food is sushi, I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so I remember seeing that and then walking. But I thought the whole reason I was going to the party was that this was a night between she and I. Yeah. And then I realized, like, oh, that whole thing that I thought was building was a sandcastle. Nothing. Yeah. Why, she was why? actually building with him. Yeah. I had a girl in college when I went to University of Iowa, uh, Marta McCormick, I believe that's her name, that we were kind of hanging out with. I thought we had this whole thing cooking. Mm-hmm. I used to yeah. write like all this stuff about her, this like weird play. I thought we had, <laughs> honestly thought we were building towards like a truly great romance. Yeah. yeah. And right before, I think it was like, you know, Thanksgiving break of that first year. It was like, before I go, mm. what a wonderful evening we've had together. <laughs> and this whole thing, maybe mm. we could at least solidify before the four days off. Yeah. And the shock uh, in her eyes Aww. of uh, yeah. what? Yeah. That's a terrible yeah. feeling. A terrible. And you're it's like, terrible. hmm. And then realizing really quickly, being like, I think you misheard me. I said, like, <laughs> This whole thing, like <laughs> us saying goodbye right now, this wonderful <laughs> friendship, <laughs> this Sweet. absolute misread by neither of us, because this is clearly just two old friends saying goodbye. But that whole thing, you go oh, like, oh, so there was something building in my head, but it honestly wasn't there for you. Mm-hmm. Those were that was the the Alex one was the first one of like, oh, Sean, can you better communicate this shit early yeah. on? Mm. Such a good lesson. <laughs> Did you feel like you took the lesson? Do you feel like you, because uh, lessons no. like this are the hardest to learn <laughs> no. in life. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Remember does, the does other your, bullshit I was talking about following your instincts? Her. <laughs> 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 you see how I'm giving opposite things here? <laughs> right. uh-huh. Uh-huh. This is the logic of somebody who drops out of high school. Yeah. The other classic question we ask everyone is if they have an embarrassing memory from middle school or high school. Yeah, I was, uh, my buddy Kent Hyun and I were riding bikes, and there was another girl. This was uh, maybe fourth or fifth grade. There was a girl named Kelly Fisher who had just moved to Atlanta and did the same thing. New girl, accent, everybody was in love with her, myself mm-hmm. included. And I had like a, a little 10 speed bike, and he had the, fr- this was early days mountain bikes where the tires just got unfairly big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we saw her. And we both looked, and his back tire hit my front tire, and his bike didn't even move. It was like a Hummer versus like a motorcycle. (laughs) And I was a little fourth grader. Uh, I was one of those. I always held the class sign until I was about fifteen. Okay. So I was I was a little guy. Uh, I mean, forty five pounds riding that bicycle. You Uh, know, very high voice, tiny little creature. Mm. And, and I hit this bike and flew forward <laughs> and skidded my face Aww. on the ground and just laid there for a second. I, I was fine. Uh, yeah. But I knew Kelly was watching. And I thought, like, I'm going to have to get up. It's fine. And before I could get up, a car pulled up and a mom yelled, little boy, are you okay? Uh, <laughs> That's when I literally had jumped up and I'm like... Fine, not a little boy. <laughs> definitely a man. A little man. But definitely a man who's bleeding from the chin, who's fine. <laughs> who's now his bike is destroyed because of a better bike. Definitely a man, not a little boy. <laughs> but it was the little boy from like a really sweet mother and like yeah. a little minivan being uh. like, oh no, little boy, are you okay? <laughs> you're so Fucking tiny. Please, please, you're so, you must have broke right in half, little boy. Yeah. Every instinct in me is just pick you 
you up and nurse you back. Please, yeah, God. I'm a full man. I'm basically a soldier. It's as if a Navy SEAL just yeah. fell off this bike. I'm fine. It's funny how the how the term little boy at such a young age is emasculating for a little it's boy. It's the worst. It's, yeah. like, it, 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 it's just the worst. It is absolutely the worst. There's nothing you could say to affect mm. somebody when they have a bad guy, when they're having a bad moment worse than, is everything okay, little boy? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, slow down, little boy. Are you okay? No, boy, I'm 45 years old. I'm a big guy. I'm a big guy. <laughs> yeah, that was that was one that the level of shame that just instantly hit my body, and then uh, getting up after and being like, "The fucking nerve!" And there's nothing you can do. It's like a really sweet mom who was yeah. like uh, so into helping. We were like, "Stop being so helpful." <laughs> It's like whatever the opposite of a Karen is. Some of these moms, you're like, yeah. you're so nice. Just cool. Just get out of here. That's like Sophie's dad. Sophie has that problem with her parents. Yeah. She, really? has really, she has a really, really sweet family. I was just family. telling them, my dad is so gentle. He's really sweet. And it's become like a thing for Ben. He's like a dog with a bone. What's right. wrong with your dad being so gentle? Or he's just, so he's just the kindest. Yeah, he's yeah. lovely. Well, now let's be honest. I got a question. What kind of man did you marry? <laughs> He's very, also he's also very yeah. sweet. I was just thinking like oh, I should probably stop doing this to David because it's like the adult version of little boy. <laughs> I, <laughs> sometimes I'll just just to like twist the knife. I'll just be like, "You're so fragile." <laughs> You're so fragile. Okay. <laughs> Jake's eyes went. Whoa. <laughs> this marriage is ending. <laughs> You're so fragile. No, you know it's a thing with men that they 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 can't really handle being sick. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. This is, this is this yeah. not just Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Can't handle being what? Being sick. sick you know, sick? like it's like, a, yeah. it's like a phenomenon. There's like the man cold mm. where yeah. it's really, you're not very sick, but you act really sick because you just can't handle it. Those are the situations. Uh, oh, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. just more sensitive with this Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Know, I... <laughs> well, he, so here's where I am going to agree with you. I don't know about sickness mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of times with sickness- a lot of guys I know, myself included, just push through. Mm -hmm. But what I will say, we are you're a real very, man. we are, thank you. Yeah, you're not a little basically, boy. <laughs> basically, a Navy SEAL, I'm not a little boy. From, tell from, that, tell from that from mom. From one to another, I can What's see What's up, it. real man? What's up, real man? Right. Uh, where we are very fragile is uh, doctor's appointments where they have to touch our body and or mm. ever enter the body. Yes, mm. yes. Where <laughs> there's been stuff my wife's complained about where I'm like. That's true. She's like, like all they did was like, push on your stomach and I was like I did not like it <laughs> yes, it's so, and they're like do so you true. realize what I've gone through physically with and I'll be like I get it but I felt very bad they touched under here <laughs> and they pushed on my lower stomach it's like you are a baby let alone putting a finger in the ass it's like yeah. no guys have, guys are very sensitive in that zone Fragile. Yeah. I've still never had at least that, with doctors though. at least with doctors yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jake, you mentioned your podcast, and I love your podcast. I love we're here to we're here to help. And Thanks. I made the mistake of listening to episode one last night while mm. I was putting my baby to sleep, and I was like, you know, AirPods in sure. have to be really quiet. But I was just every time you said, I don't even remember the name Tup Tuk. Tup Tuk, something <laughs> insane. <laughs> <laughs> the name of, of yes. a character in this story, yeah. of this person you're trying to help. I snore. I was it was a snort laugh. I Thank woke you. her up yeah, several it's, times. It's, I will say so to anybody listening. If you're going to start, start at the most recent and then go backwards. Okay. okay. And the reason I'll say that is just because, as you guys know too, like the shows. What I really like about podcasts and what's so nice about not dealing with like a studio and a mm. network is the shows are allowed to kind of change and evolve and grow. Mm. Yeah. In a way that. I don't get to do that if I'm doing TV or a movie. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're selling a product, so then you just have to make that product. So I really like the choose your own adventure aspect of podcasts and how the thing can evolve and change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the the thing that's really keeping me invested in the show, I mean, uh, Gareth Reynolds is my partner, and it's a 20 year friend. He's unthinkably funny stand up, just a million mm -hmm. one liners. But the callers are so funny. Mm. Uh, our whole yeah. premise of the show is we take live calls from people. So Gareth and I don't know who's calling, but our producer, Kevin, has screened them. And they have to have a real problem that's real to them, but we're not therapists. So it's not like, should I get divorced? Mm -hmm. You know, it's stupid yeah. stuff. But it's very real to them. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and so yeah. getting to do bits with like regular humans. Yeah. I'm like, these people are cracking me up. It, it's really special. I, I feel like we've tried with Podcrush to like talk to listeners, but I think because the the tone of our show is a little more a little more like heartfelt, yeah. it just becomes like sad. Yes, totally. Oh God. Yeah. Yes. Oh, we we had that to too, by you. the way. Yeah. <laughs> but well, I'm like it, it, You're right, by the way. Yeah. Was there ever any episodes that you got or callers you had where you just couldn't air them because it's just too serious? Yes. So yeah. what mm-hmm. we didn't so what I mean about the evolution of it, we now I lead out with say it's gotta be a stupid problem. Mm-hmm. Because people would start and they'd be like, Hey, and we're like, How you doing? You're on weird <laughs> now. Well, can we help you with we're a couple of old radio guys from another era? Like, shoot, go ahead and stop talking, you little yeah. rat. Go ahead. And then they would be like, I've been in a loveless marriage for nine years <laughs> and I don't know what to do. And then we'd be like, Let me give you advice. And you'd be like, <laughs> I don't know. My buddy, my yeah. partner Gareth has a cat. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're <laughs> And so we would finish and he'd go like, I hope we helped that person. And I was yeah. like, I mean, we didn't. Yeah. And it wasn't entertaining. It was sad. Like, I hope yeah. that human is okay. Yeah. But yeah. it's not for us. And the Dungeons and Dragons lady was the beginning. Like, we like a call that like, you know, for example, one woman dated her husband forever, but before they got married and then they moved in together, but they hadn't lived together until marriage. And then she said, what's happening now is they live in a small place. He wakes up and does his morning stretches after he takes a shower and he does it with no underpants on in their bedroom and she's seeing stuff she truthfully (laughs) doesn't want to see and she has casually brought it up to him and Mm. his thought is, is like, this is what I've been doing. This is what I do. This is marriage. But also like, I have to stretch. I don't have a lot of time. Mm. And she's like, but it's- To put underwear on. That's what you're right. (laughs) That takes a lot of, I wouldn't want to do that alone. (laughs) 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 It's so, but those will be the games of it. So that when you say that, he has a thing he had said no when she brought it up to him. Mm. So then on our show, we eventually bring him on too. Oh, so amazing. that, but that idea wow. of being able to like get in as long as it's real to the callers, because we also don't air them when we realize they're just trying to do bits and be funny. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We're not right. doing a sketch you show. You get a lot of them. that. Uh, we did at the beginning, but mm. you can sniff it out pretty fast. Yeah. Right, right. And once mm. you sniff it out, you just go like, all right, thanks. <laughs> mm. uh, like, right. like why, I don't want to waste time on it. The, the yeah. beauty right. is when somebody goes, I know this sounds stupid. Mm-hmm. But this is significant for me. A guy just called on the one we released uh, yesterday or today or whatever day it is. Uh, is this with the that, kiwi? No, this was a guy who really. What was the kiwi one? But not a, not the fruit. The a New Zealander. He's oh he's, yeah, the uh, kiwi. Yo, <laughs> 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 yeah, the kiwi guy's incredible. <sighs> he uh, took a dump in the woods around his friends once, and he they don't let him live it down. So he said, like, what do we do? So Gareth pitched. They call your friends to the same woods and then give them laxatives. <laughs> yeah. In a bar. Which it was, it was like yes. the thing that I was kind of awed at is like it was it was, it was plausible. It was plausible. Yes, that's it was right. like you take a few bars, you maybe only put it in one or two. Yes, exactly. So only one, maybe two of the friends has exactly to right. take a shit in the woods. Exactly right. And then it's a it's pl- it's like, you know, I, I guess the point was that there would be plausible deniability. It's like, no, that, that wouldn't what that, are you that wouldn't hurt about? anybody. Yes, exactly right. And so then he could put it off on them and be like, Oh, now you, you know. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, but it's fun. It's been uh, it's been way more fun than I expected. And, mm. you know, I know you know this, Penn, but as an actor, what's really great about it at times is like, you sometimes get great material and you get to do it, but you're not in control of it. And when I did no, self-reliance, no, never. never. And it's yeah. not your, it's not your, the nature of the job. And if you try to control it, you're a little difficult. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and you don't want to be that. That's not what the yeah. game is. You don't want to take away from somebody else's vision. It's true, yeah. and it can't. It really can't change that much once it's there to you. Like it, it, you know, it is the actors should like have a lot of notes. It's like, look, yes. I I respect where you're coming from with that. At the same time, <laughs> like it's not going to change that much. Yes, it's but it's also really. It's I've gotten really conflicted on that because I heard this like great thing for Ethan Hawke. He was doing some interview I saw that popped up on my Instagram where he was talking about like. To be an, a great actor, it's okay to ask questions like, why would mm-hmm. I walk here? Right? Why would I do this? But when you also get really into production, you go like, because it's lit for that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And you're yeah, like, exactly. 
I'll tell you why you can't spit in the middle of this. Because <laughs> we don't want to spend 45 minutes lighting the other side right. of you. Mm. And you go like, and both sides of the argument really work for me. And there's times where on set you kind of get annoyed by one thing or the other. Or the idea, is this for the art or is this for the audience? Is this yeah. for ourselves or is this for like, yeah. why are we doing this weird thing that used mm. to make a ton of sense? But now we have so many different ways to make things. That's true. And what's nice about the podcast to me is that it's very simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like you're making it, you have your base, you're making it for them. It's very clean. And for ours, the callers are the engine. And then it's our job to be around the engine. And I'm like, oh, I like how simple that is for at least my brain to wrap my like the, my thoughts around it. Mm -hmm. At the, at the risk of being too earnest, I yeah. lived in China when New Girl was coming out. And <clears throat> I had moved there for a particular reason, and I was very depressed. Sort of Before like Before you start, why did you mm -hmm. move to China in 2011? Yeah, 2000, yeah, I moved there in 2012, 2011. Um, and I went there to teach English <clears throat> at cool. a university. I, I, was, I had a master's degree in education, and it was at a time where you couldn't really get a job. There had been like a budget cut for schools and you couldn't get a job if you had a master's but no experience because they had to pay you more so they didn't want to pay inexperienced teachers more money so right. basically i couldn't get a job as a teacher which is what i had trained to do <clears throat> and I, I had a cousin who lived in china uh who was like you'd, you'd get a job at an amazing university in china with your credentials like why don't you try so i tried and i got a job at, at one of the top schools in china in beijing and i had a two-year contract cool. and i was like I'm going to see it through. So one thing about me, even if I'm miserable, if I make a commitment, I'll see it through. So That's I cool. saw the two years That's through. why she's on this show. <laughs> yeah, just like so <laughs> waiting for this contract to expire. But I hated it. I, it just wasn't, I didn't hate yeah, China, yeah, but like yeah. for me there, it didn't make sense. It wasn't right. It wasn't right. I was instantly, like from the moment I landed, I was like, oh, oh I made God. a mistake. <laughs> like oh, I, no. I knew it. And I was very depressed. Like one of the most severe depressions I've ever had. But New Girl, I had seen the first season, and then when I came to China, the second season came out. My opinion, second season, best season. Yeah. And truly, I, I agree like, with you, by the way. <laughs> so good. Like, truly, I remember, like, one of the only moments of joy that I would have in a week was watching New Girl. So I feel That's like a awesome. very special bond to that show. Aww. It really, That's like, awesome. I would look forward to it, and it was like, for 22 minutes, I was happy, and then I was depressed again. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I'm, I'm very grateful to you for being part of that No, experience. so I appreciate that, and do go off on a little tangent on it, which was yeah. going back to earlier when you said the arts, which kind of started the thing about mm. the idea of the arts and why we do this. Mm. Uh, I'm 45 years old, and I don't know how much longer I'm going to keep playing the game. As you age, you start seeing like your exit path. Mm. Mm. And what I've really kind of realized about this whole like dream that it's been this idea of entertainment is that enough people have told me stories like that mm. of the things that really meant something to them where you go like, well, that's really neat. Mm. Yeah. You know, it started off as like a dream and then it became economic. And then once you've like kind of made your money and put yourself in a certain spot in the game, then you go like, well, why do I keep playing? Mm. Mm. I don't want to be 55 years old on a red carpet. I don't, I don't want to wear well, a tuxedo and go to an event. Mm. I don't want to do that now. Right. So I'm like, so what is the f like? So why play this game? Yeah. And then there are certain people who will come up and go. I had just gone through I lost my wife or my mm. husband or my this thing had happened. And you this thing you did was unthinkably fun escapism for me. Mm. And I can't tell you how much it meant. And then I go back to my childhood and watching shows like The Wonder Years or Cheers mm. or Roseanne. And my whole family sitting together and really being happy mm -hmm. and being like, mm. for this 23 minutes, it's really great. And as soon as it ends and you're back in your real world, you're like, just give me another episode. Yeah. Yeah. And so I don't that like that's what I mean when I go like direct to audience and entertainer rather than the arts, because whatever is giving people that thing in those moments it feels like, well, that's what the core of this whole game is. Is that where self-reliance came from? No, bit, that, or? no. So self-reliance, this new kind of thought is coming from a lot of times like doing the reaction to self-reliance and talking to people about it mm -hmm. and being like, you know, because we, I made that movie, we went to South by Southwest, Hulu came in aggressively and bought it. We had already mm -hmm. sold, we were going to be Paramount International wow. uh, and I had pushed to go to, um, 
uh, South by Southwest, honestly, just because I wanted to see it in front of a crowd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I know it's going to be a streamer movie, and yeah. I passed. I don't want a premiere. I don't want a Hollywood night where, like, everybody in the movie and their managers go, like, wonderful oh, stuff. Shit. And I, for some reason, <laughs> have to wear a tie. <laughs> and I'm like, I feel like a fake business person. I'm like, come on, yeah. why are we in ties for, like, little photos? Mm. And... After Hulu bought it, everybody was really excited, but I genuinely was talking to people um, and reading early reviews and reading comments, and the issues people had with the movie, I thought were right. Hmm. And I was like, oh, the third act does change in a way that isn't quite right. Hmm. And so then I, I just fought for more money, and MRC, the studio, which was unbelievable, said like, yeah, let's spend it. So I was able to do reshoots and change it. Oh, wow. and, really? and then yes. And so the doing that whole process and being stuck in post for all that time doing it and figuring out was realizing I'm only now thinking about the audience for the first time hmm. Hmm. and realizing if I do another product and I'm going to write a movie or a TV show and I'm going to try to care about it, I need to think about the audience not just as this thing, but as the person we're making this for. So yeah. that doesn't mean, in my opinion, change your intent or your passion or bend backwards for something you don't believe in but if you're going to open up a restaurant think about the customers right true yeah now don't cook something you don't love because everyone will see past that Mm. and that was the big kind of takeaway so hearing that story about china yeah uh, i i love it i appreciate it oh good thank you i'm so glad i got to tell you yeah yeah Yeah, it's cool for me those (laughs) shows were uh battlestar galactica (laughs) <laughs> and uh, and a podcast called Radio Lab. So I, I got to be honest. Until I was about twenty seven, how is that how old I was? Yeah, I think twenty six, twenty seven. I had never had that experience with television, mm. and frankly, didn't like television. Mm. And had been working at it for half my life, over half my life. And mm. so yeah, I. But, but Nava, your your China, I totally get that. I yes. totally get like having a low point, having this show, mm-hmm. and just being like, I love oh, that. You know. Pen, do you feel yeah. like you weren't into TV because you were you were too much on the other side of it? Like you saw how the sausage yeah, that, got that's made? why we're talking about this, right? Yes, uh, yes. I, I, look, I've been working. In, I mean, I was interested in art, but I was also interested in the entertainment aspect. I mean, look, the reason I started doing it, which I bet you also love, Jake, is like the culture on set. Yeah, being on a set is like one of the most fun places in oh, the great. world mm-hmm. of a certain mm-hmm. at a certain time. Like you know, there's also an argument that. They've historically been some of the least diverse places in the world, but yeah. they can also, but they can be culturally diverse because of the cast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the crew might be predominantly male and white, but the cast is like something that where you know you get re- people from all kinds of walks of life mm-hmm. in, in a certain sense. And I loved it, all ages, all kinds of people. And I also really love the the thing I love most about set, and it depends on the set because mm-hmm. you know it depends who's running it. If you have one bad, egotistical person at the top. Yeah. It's really hard to enjoy the day. I had That's a producer yeah. I had a producer once tell me when I was on a project that I really didn't enjoy and it was early in my career and I thought like I don't know how to avoid this. Mm. Cuz if I got myself here how is this not going to happen again? And mm. I didn't see any of the red flags. I didn't get it and the producer said mm-hmm. when you think about a project uh think about the produ- the director of it. Close your eyes imagine their kind of essence, like who they are with their eyes closed, hmm. and then imagine living in that mm. for three months. Yeah. And they're like, if you're okay with that, then there's going to be other people, castmates, mm. crew that you get close to, but that is the thing. Right. Mm. And so I've gotten very selective of whose energy I want to be in. And then when you're there, what's really nice about being on a set is, and you rarely have this in life, I have it with my wife with the kids, but that's about it. You all have the same exact goal. Yeah, that's amazing. It, and you're mm. like, every single person here, we can all do our bits in the morning. Mm. Our goal is to do these seven pages. Mm-hmm. From yeah. the cast, the crew, to every, you're mm. like, neat. And when you've done it as a group, when they go like, that's a wrap on the day and everybody's happy, we all accomplished our goal at the same time. <laughs> yeah. 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 We all experience. have a lunch from our goal at the same. And you're like, oh, this is a really nice way to feel community. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. The like, community, that's that's nice. what it was. It's, and me, it's really it was nice. Like, 
that was kind of the first thing that drew me to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, yeah. There's, there, and and if you can enjoy it, like you're saying, throughout the day, I mean, it's fun. It's great. It's and fun. if you have like good, funny people, and you guys all mm. see, you're like, oh, it can just be a dream. I am ready to stop playing a serial mm. killer for that reason. <laughs> because, <laughs> because, I, yeah, I mean, I actually, I mean, you know, <laughs> I do, I jo nothing but jokes because it's like, what am I going to do? Take this, take this guy seriously? Like yeah, in yeah, rehearsal? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I can't yeah. do that. I have to, I have to do that on camera. That's enough. Yeah. Like. But it's you know you can only you can only elevate that mood so much. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to yeah. a show that is not just called you about me and one person <laughs> like you know like ah uh, you know a little um, bit of lightness comedy. a little yeah, bit of lightness. Some, some, yeah. Jake, if someone asked Anna Kendrick to close her eyes and think about yeah. your energy, how would she describe you? What do you think she would have said? Um, I know with her, it was very collaborative. So mm. she's a, a director too, and she was working on her project or about to start hers. Mm. So the, what was, and I've worked, I've known her for a long time. We did Drinking Buddies together a long time ago. Mm. And then uh, Mike and Dave, some other movie in the middle, and we've kind of kept in touch. So hers would be different because she did feel more like a partner in it. And we mm. could talk about things. I could talk about things with her that I was experiencing that I couldn't with anybody else. Mm. So we could like rehearse a scene and block it. And then the crew would be like, we need like 20 minutes. And we'd I'd be like, all right, so we're good. And then we could go in another room and I'd be like, so I'll tell you what's really tricky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she's like, right. And I go, so you got to make sure your DP is good. Mm. She's like, no, I know, I know. And like, it was a lot of that together. You mentioned a couple of times in different stories, writing a play. <laughs> like yep. at different points in your life when you were when you were young maybe in 10th grade when you were in college and then you described one of the plays in the dialogue heavy hey what's up not much and all i could think of was that that like plot point in new girl where nick miller writes a play <laughs> and it's like totally a stream of consciousness wait when does nick write a play is it a novel a oh, the book, the book, yeah, yeah, the book. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the yeah. book. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, that's yes. what I'm imagining you yeah. your play. Yeah. That. <laughs> but I, it just made me wonder, like, how much crossover do you mm. think there is between the character? I guess when you're on a show for that many years, mm. there does end up being, like, storylines that are inspired by you, the real Jake Johnson. How much crossover do you think there is between the character and you? Well, I think it's hard. I think there's obviously, we improvised a ton on that. Mm. So, like, bits that I find really funny, like, the truth is, the, that was the play that I wrote in, you know, when I dropped out. Mm -hmm. But then I went to NYU for playwriting and plays became everything for me. Mm -hmm. And so, but those stories aren't that funny. Yeah. yeah. So like if we're talking about writing, like I remember when we did the, the book was called Z's for Zombies that Nick wrote. <laughs> uh, and I remember the bit of it was there, there were all sitting on a bed and, um, I think it was me, Max, and Lamorne, but they're all like something about they were like celebrating my character's book. <laughs> they were all reading different parts <laughs> of the book. And I purposefully, because I didn't have any lines, I don't think I was just reacting. And they were going to shoot it in a group shot. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear what the writers had come up with that mm -hmm. were in Nick's book so that it could be, you know, equally funny for me. So I remember yeah. one where there was like, <laughs> like, like Lamar said, like you spelled rhythm wrong like 72 <laughs> times in this book, and each time is different. One was like, You've got a crossword puzzle that goes over three pages, man. And you just have to sit there in the scenes and like nod back, be like, Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> you go like a dialogue, like they're just saying hi over and over and being like, It's interesting stuff. It's interesting stuff. <laughs> Humans are fascinating. Like the fun of that show mm. and going back to what's fun about set is when everybody's in on the same game mm. and everybody knows what's funny about each other person. Like Lamorne and I talk about a lot, but one of the most fun parts of that show and what I miss the most is like, if Lamorne improvises something, uh, he's such a funny dude, but a lot of times he hasn't thought in his head about the follow-up line. Mm. He's almost editing the scene <laughs> as a blackout, right? So he would go like, because if you're going to do that kind of party, I'm going to have to take my shirt off. Thinking that's where they'll get yeah, to right. So all you do in a scene with Lamorne is go like, it's that kind of party, man. Yeah. And then he'll go like, what's that? He'll go like, you said if it's going to be that kind of party, it is that kind of party. And then you'll go, so I'm going to take this shirt off. And you go like, well, go ahead, man. Yeah. And so... Because the cameras wouldn't cut. Yeah. You start creating a game that the characters don't think they're on a TV show. Mm -hmm. But the actors sometimes are thinking they're on a TV show. 
And so, I don't know, that's the stuff that would get really fun where then I could see in Lamorne's eyes him being half mad at me, yeah. and half not wanting to laugh. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the writers start writing stuff and you would see like, oh, Lamorne's really funny when you put him in a corner mm. and he's acting really alpha status and then has to like weasel his way out. Mm. So you're doing that as a bit on set a lot. Mm. You're just trying, I'm trying to find more things that have that feeling. Yeah. Mm. And so that that then gets into the show that you're like, oh, that is the fun of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would yeah. say there is overlap, but the overlap is actually more of the bits than the real right. people. Yeah. yeah. Like Max and I just talked the other day and it doesn't feel like Schmidt and Nick and all. Right. Are, mm. But what, if it's my birthday... Every year on social media, he'll post "Happy 50th, my man." Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, that just makes so sense. that like he'll if he does like the Mario Lopez show, mm -hmm. he'll go like he'll go like what's going on with the neighborhood? He'll be like, I just want to celebrate my man Jake Johnson's 50th birthday, <laughs> and he's been doing that for like six years. <laughs> and we're just doing those bits mm -hmm. so that when we interact, we get to live in that space again. Yeah, mm -hmm. that totally makes sense. Yeah, yeah it's fun. I just want to ask about one other project because uh, I'm obsessed with Into the Spider Verse and Across the Spider Verse. I feel like some of the best animated movies of all yeah, those, time. They're shocking. Yeah, definitely. And I, shocking. yeah, I was just curious when you got the script for Into the Spider Verse. I don't know what that whole process was, but did you have any conception of how incredible it was going no, to be? None. I mean, mm -hmm. kind of. I knew, you know, Phil Lord, who I've worked with, I've known for a long time. I think he and Chris Miller are some of the most talented people playing the game right now. And so Phil wrote to me years ago and said, I'm working on an animated idea. I would love you in it. Um, mm -hmm. I want to offer it, but the studio, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of the names on a list that can just get it done. Mm -hmm. yeah. So would you be willing to do some dancing? It's, I, it's going to be you, but we've got to do stuff. And my thought even from the beginning without pre even hearing Spider-Man mm -hmm. is if Phil Lord is excited about it, it's going to be good. Mm. if Phil and Chris are like, this is what we're doing, those guys don't really miss. Mm. And so the material was then really interesting. The recording was fun. Shamik, I think, is excellent as Miles. And we got to record mm. together a lot. So there was a lot that was feeling like, oh, this is great. But then Shamik and I watched the first cut together yeah. in like the basement of Sony. I can't imagine. And afterwards, we were both like, we could pretend that we knew. But yeah. Yeah. We just got to become fans and we're like, visually, this movie is shocking. It's, sh so really it's shocking. Spectacular. No one yeah, has no, done I anything mean, like I, it's it. It's actually one of my yeah. favorite shocking. movies. Yeah. It's yeah. one shocking. of my favorite movies. Yeah. Just, just yeah, I love it. without any kind of clarification. I don't like animated movies for, for the most part. And Penn was like, you have to watch Into the Spider-Verse. Cool. Like yeah. Oh, one I was the, the one who told movie. you about it? You were the one who told me about it. And I watched oh, it because wow. of you. Yeah. And then, yeah, I'm obsessed. So good. So our, our final question. If you could go back... To 12 year old Jake, uh, what would you say or do, if anything? I don't know if I would go back. Hmm. Yeah. I think 12 year old me that age is such a tricky time. There's so much going on. You know, there's like this sweet answer, but it's not accurate. My dad wasn't around until I was 18. Then we got very close, we became best friends. Mm -hmm. uh, he passed away. A very sweet answer is like, forgive your dad sooner. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's not real, especially not at 12. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like to say, like, hug all the people you love, but, like, I was still in the mix with everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. Of course. You're just yeah. gonna, so you're, like, it's you're too in it. I, you know, and I don't want to do the, like, the, it's going to be all right, because, you know, there's bumps. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So it's a bad question. You're right. You know what I'd maybe say? <laughs> uh, invest in Apple. Yeah. <laughs> that's good advice. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, Goofy. That's There's going to be a moment. Yeah. When computer, because I remember when www.nbc.com happened, I remember watching it on TV and thinking like, and I truly thought that'll never work. <laughs> mm. I was like, nobody is going to go from TV to a computer. Wow. And my mom was like, we are not getting a computer. And I'm like, nobody will. Mm. <laughs> and being like, well, they're going down the wrong road, but yeah. what I would do is... That's like, a great example of your mom not having her famous exactly. intuition. Yeah. Right. My mom and I know in <laughs> WWW ain't going to work. <laughs> <Go nowhere. laughs> no chance. Oh, <laughs> and now we're all talking in different areas on microphones. Yeah. Now we cannot live, with, yeah, yes. live without yeah, them. Yeah, that's yes. crazy. 
Jake, Jake. thank you so much for coming on. Really it was a real pleasure. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, congrats on the show, guys. You can listen to Jake Johnson's podcast, We're Here to Help, anywhere you get your podcasts, and watch his new film, Self Reliance, on Hulu. You can also follow him on the gram at Mr. Jake Johnson. Hold on, can we hey. stop for one second? I yes. just, I've noticed that I'm getting your Zoom audio, guys, you, uh, Sophia Nava. Oh, really? Okay. I'm not hearing your mics, so but okay. as long as your mics are going, you're good. I think they are. Let me. I just... don't normally hear that. How about now? Hello? Better. How about now? Pat? Talk. Yeah, now I'm hearing more of like that the mic. crystal clear level, but it just, yeah, I just wasn't hearing it before. It, it maybe it's because you were far or whatever. There was a bright orange cable that I unplugged. <laughs> that you just had to plug back in, so it's probably that. Okay. okay I mean, yeah, no, it's look, now much as better. a betting man, it was that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll you, could take, you could take away the weird, probably. I came in here and for no reason I unplugged this thing that said MIC. I only two cables I unplugged yeah. one. And then it sounded weird. And then this tech person plugged it in and now it works. It might be that. Don't know. Yeah, this, it's guy, that. this guy who's holding my baby. Yeah. Yeah, That's no. the thing. That's we the will court. be having a large marital fight about it later but. hey babe could you not unplug the mic you have one job I'm gonna tell you it makes me look pretty bad you're not helping me here honey bunny I'm also holding the goddamn baby here honey you're killing him you're, you're literally he's right on the other room being like she's killing me she unplugged the mic then when I fixed it she goes it might have been that assuming if it wasn't that, it's his ass. <laughs> yeah, right.